what exactly does this downstream element entail and specifically how is the helium supplied and transported? I mean, presumably we're, we're talking about the most efficient means of transportation here across the geographies. Yeah, yeah, thanks, um, Rob. It, it's, it's really quite interesting, as we know, that helium is probably the coldest liquid that there is. Um, it liquefies at, um, I'll give a couple of different uh, temperatures, 4.15 Kelvin or minus 269C or minus 452F. They're all the same temperature. Um, it's very cold and uh, the industry has de developed very specialized transportation equipment to manage this. So supply as a, as a liquid um, is the most cost-effective way to distribute helium long distances. As Jeremy talked about, there are plenty of tube trailers and tube trailer technology with, with composite trailers has now, has now extended the ability to transport in gas, but most of the big locations outside of the US require helium transport in these liquid containers. So the big issue is keeping that uh, temperature at four Kelvin for lengthy periods of distribution time. Containers were specifically constructed um, to handle transportation of helium. Initially in the early 1970s, the first kind of global transportation of liquid helium started and BOC was one of the leaders in that. Um, so the containers are constructed that have a liquid nitrogen reservoir as a kind of mobile refrigerant. Um, and the issue is that that Lynn reservoir takes um, about 30 to 45 days to deplete. And what that does is that helps the container absorb heat leak inwards, and it prevents the helium from evaporating. Once that um, shield has been depleted, then the pressure starts to rise quite rapidly. So in the early days, the first containers were designed with a pressure of about 64 PSI, but as technology has developed, we're now um, up to, it sort of was initially 64, then 90, then 150, and we're now at about 175 PSI rating for these containers. That means once the liquid has depleted, the pressure in the container can get to about 175 PSI before it starts venting. So that, that kind of gives us some, some parameters around which we work and we can sort of say, okay, ideally we should have that, that container at its destination, i.e. The, trans, the transfills that I mentioned within that 45 day period. So the challenges that we face is that there's a global supply chain, as I think everybody knows by now, this was heavily impacted by COVID. Firstly, um, it lowered the demand for global shipping. And then as the shipping requirements kind of uh, rebuilt, we had chaos. And I think this was well, um, well covered in the press. For example, we heard about um, congestion outside ports such as Los Angeles, where there were some, on occasions, 100 ships waiting to dock and be unloaded. Um, is, this has happened at many other locations. And the result has been significantly extended transport times and costs. Uh, this has continued for the period since COVID, and it's been um, exacerbated by the shipping lines who've made more demands regarding bookers, bookings for third-party shippers. Um, and all this has meant that it's way more complex transporting helium without losses. So the containers were designed for this whole time for LIN of about 30 to 45 days. And we've seen international transport times well in excess of that. The result is that it means that there's larger losses of helium in transit for the off-takers. And that's a big issue um, that, that we've had to deal with. Another factor is these longer times has meant the requirements for containers has increased significantly. So huge extra investment in assets um, or like these ISO containers. They also take a long time to build and there's only a, a couple of manufacturers that actually make these containers. So that's put a lot of pressure in terms of the ability to get helium from these remote locations. I think Tim and Jeremy talked about them. In the US, 
Those are those are relatively manageable, but in places like Qatar, Russia, Algeria, Australia, etc., there are significant challenges getting that helium to the market. 